I write a ton of code. If you take a look at my GitHub, you're going to see that I've made over 8,000 comments in the last year. So one of the reasons why I'm able to maintain productivity and push out a lot of code is because of the tools that I use. If you are a software developer, you need to develop an intuition and an understanding of the tools that surround the ecosystem under which you're developing your application. And if you know the correct tools, they can help you increase your productivity and get things done much faster. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the tools that I've been using recently as a software developer to improve my productivity. Some of these are going to be dev tools, while others are going to be non-dev tools, but all of them are essentials in my opinion. And I'm going to be telling you why I've picked them up and what are the benefits of using them. I'd also like to quickly mention that some of the things that I'm going to be sharing within this video are going to be tools that apply to general software development. And some are going to be more tailored focused towards mobile app development. And some are going to be even more tailored focused towards Flutter app development. So with that said, let's get into the video. So the first tool that I'd like to talk about is a very cool open source backend for your next SaaS or mobile app. And it's called Pocket Base. The cool thing about Pocket Base is that you can self-host it. It's only one file and it's blazingly fast. It also uses the SQLite database to actually store data within it. So you do not need to pay for a database. All of the code for your backend as well as the database just lives on that one server on which you've deployed Pocket Base. Some of the cool features about Pocket Base are that it's a backend that comes built in with a real-time database, an admin dashboard, the ability for you to upload files and handle files as well as authentication and it supports a fully fledged schema editor so you can define the tables and collections that are within your actual database and then store data within them. So I highly recommend that you take a look at Pocket Base. They have an excellent documentation that can show you everything you need to know in order to efficiently build applications using it. And one of the things that I love about it is that they have a client side SDK for Dart. So it's going to be very easy for you to use Pocket Base when you're building your Flutter applications. Besides this, another reason why I recommend Pocket Base to a lot of people is for the fact that it's cheaper to run and you basically control all of the data. And the reason I say this is because I know that when we build personal projects, a lot of times we're looking for a backend solution that does pretty much everything for us and doesn't cost us a fortune. And we know that our app is going to be something niche. It's not going to be used by tens of thousands of users every month or more than that. So in that case, Pocket Base is an excellent solution. In the case that you're building an application that is potentially going to be used by tens of thousands of users or hundred thousands of users, then in that case, I think Pocket Base is not a good solution. And that, in that case, you might want to take a look at some other backend solutions such as Strapi or maybe Firebase, Superbase, AppWrite, something like that. So with that said, I think still Pocket Base is an excellent backend that you should definitely take a look at because it brings a lot of features out of the box and you can self-host it, it doesn't cost you anything, it has an awesome community and an awesome documentation, and it's a great open source project, and you know I love open source projects, so I had to give them a shout out, and I've been personally using them for some of the side projects that I've been developing, and I actually plan on creating a complete tutorial on Pocket Base coupled with Flutter on my channel pretty soon. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below and like the video, and I'll try my best to create that for you. So now with Pocket Base out of the way, let's talk about the next tool that I'd like to talk about, and it's Revenue Cat. So what does Revenue Cat do? Well, if you take a look at the description for it, it says that Revenue Cat is used by some of the world's best staff to power in-app purchases, manage customer data, and grow revenue across iOS, Android, and the web. So what I'd like to tell you is that if you've ever worked with implementing purchases within your application, it is a nightmare for any developer. And Revenue Cat makes it very easy for you to implement them. Some of the features that I like about Revenue Cat, and this video is not sponsored by them at all, is the fact that one, you can easily integrate in-app purchases within your iOS, Android, or web-based applications. It also acts as the single source of truth for the actual customer data, so you know which customers have purchase something which customers haven't. It also has amazing charts and analytics based into it so you can understand the actual health of your business or the health of your product and see how many active trials you have, how many users are using your app, what's the churn rate, what's the LTV and other things like that. So I highly recommend that you take a look at Revenue Cat. They have a SDK for Flutter so it's very easy to integrate it and one tip that I can give you is that 
if you are planning on creating a Flutter application and then plan on implementing some kind of a purchase mechanism within it, then I'll recommend that you use Revenue Cat. And the reason I say that is because it's going to save you a lot of headache. I tried using Revenue Cat. I really liked it. It made the actual integration of implementing in-app purchases within my application very easy. So that's why I'm recommending it to you guys. Another reason why I like Revenue Cat a lot is because it's free for you to use up to a certain threshold. If your app makes $2,500 or less every month, you don't have to pay anything to use Revenue Cat. After that, for whatever revenue you make, you have to just pay 1% of that. So I think it's an excellent tool that you should try to implement within your development practices. It's going to make it very easy for you to implement in-app purchases, subscription logic within your actual Flutter applications, and I highly recommend it. The next dev tool that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is Homebrew. And Homebrew is the missing package manager for Mac OS. So if you've ever been a Linux user, you know that most Linux distributions have a package manager built out of the box, but Mac OS doesn't. Homebrew is an excellent package manager that I recommend. So now most of you might be asking, hey Hussein, why would I need a package manager? Well, one of the reasons for using a package manager is that it can make your life very easy when it comes to installing different dependencies that you require as a developer when you're building certain applications. So to demonstrate the actual capabilities and power of Homebrew, what I'm going to be doing is giving you the following example. Let's just say that I'm building my Flutter application and I want to deploy it on iOS. In that case, there might be a scenario where I'd have to have Cocoa Pods installed on my actual system because to build my actual iOS application, it requires that. Then I have two options. One is that I can actually go to the Cocoa Pods website like so, and then install the actual binary, install it like that, as you can see here. But the other way I could install Cocoa Pods could be by using Homebrew. So I can, for example, go on Google and type in Cocoa Pods Brew, because Brew is the actual package manager, and it's going to show you a single line of code that you can paste within your terminal and quickly install Cocoa Pods. Besides this, let's just say that I want to set up Docker on my system. Well, I can install Docker using the brew package manager as well and there are a bunch of other packages that you can install using homebrew so this is an excellent package manager that i highly recommend and i use it a ton during my day-to-day -day activities as a software developer and basically it's my go-to place for managing the dependencies and packages that i want on my system it makes it easy for me to install these dependencies update these dependencies as well as remove them from my system if i don't need them so i highly recommend homebrew as well Moving onwards from this, the next dev tool that I'd like to talk about is an awesome company called Backblaze. And Backblaze is basically an S3 compatible cloud storage, which is very cheap. And the reason I'm sharing with you Backblaze is for the fact that I was recently in a dilemma where I was using Firebase storage for one of the applications that I built for somebody. And their app was very focused on delivering content to the user in the form of audio as well as video. So then they basically asked me, hey Hussein, is there a way in which I can reduce my bill? I don't wanna pay thousands of dollars for Firebase storage. So I went on the internet, looked for a couple of different providers that provide some kind of a stored solution to serve audio, video, or other content to end users, and I found Backplace. Backplace is an awesome platform that basically, as I told you, is an S3 compatible cloud storage, which is incredibly cheap, they say at one fifth the cost. So if you go to the pricing section for this, you can see that it just costs you $1.06 per terabyte per month, and you can go up to a B2 reserve plan for like $1,560 per 20 terabyte per year, which is incredibly cheap if you know how much cloud storage costs. So one of the reasons I like Backblaze is because they offer great pricing, but another reason for that is that they have the ability for you to compare costs of how much data you would be storing, how much monthly downloads would be happening, and how much that would cost you to store that data on Backblaze as opposed to other platforms that give you cloud storage, such as Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Chrome. And if you integrate Backblaze with Cloudflare, then all of the egress traffic that you have is going to be practically free for you and Blackbase is not going to charge you anything for that. And they pretty much have this mentioned somewhere, I just don't know where it is, but it's called some kind of a cloud alliance, something like that. Moving onwards from this, now we're going to be talking about some tools that are specifically focused towards Flutter development. 
The first is an excellent package, which is called Flex Color Scheme. And the reason I like it a lot is because it makes it extremely easy for you to implement color schemes within your Flutter application. And it also makes it very easy for you to implement dark and light mode within your Flutter applications. So one of the benefits for Flex Color Scheme is that. The other benefit of Flex Color Scheme is that it provides you with a web GUI that allows you to experiment with all of the different themes that Flex Color Scheme supports and you can create your own custom themes and you can switch between light and dark mode and see how the app looks and performs with these different themes. For example, currently I'm using the theme M3 Blue Mine, but I can change that to this red theme and I can see how this gets reflected on the actual app that I'm created and how it's going to look in dark mode, how it's going to look on light mode. So Flex Color Scheme is the package that I was introduced to recently and since I've been introduced to it, I've been using it in all of the projects that I've been building. And I've also ported over some of the older projects that I've coded to use Flex Color Scheme because it just makes it extremely easy to implement color schemes, light and dark mode within our Flutter applications. So I highly recommend it and a huge shout out to the actual author for Flex Color Scheme, which is rydmike.com. So moving onwards from this, another package that I fell in love with recently is called Object Box. And it's basically a Flutter database for dot native objects and on-device vector management. Let me tell you that Object Box is the most powerful on-device database that I've seen on the market that's completely free to use. It has a ton of cool features, such as the ability for you to store vectors within the database, perform on-device vector search. It's also asset compliant. It's cross-platform. It's scalable. It has the ability for you to add relational data within it. It supports queries. And finally, it has automatic schema migration. And if you end up liking object box a lot and migrate to their pro plan or enterprise plan, then it allows you to have data sync capabilities within your application as well. So basically you can sync the data for the user on your application with an actual cloud server and the application works regardless of whether the user is using the actual application in offline mode or online mode and then make sure that the data is synchronized and that the data is kept up to sync between the client and the user. So Object Box is an excellent database that I highly recommend. They have an awesome documentation as well and it's completely free for you to use unless you need that data sync functionality then it's going to cost you something but it's still going to be incredibly cheap for the actual tech that they're giving you and if you take a look at their description it says that their advanced vector search empowers on-device ai for a variety of applications such as retrieval augmented generation generative ai similarity searches and it's designed to run on mobile and iot devices so it's very resource efficient so highly recommend object box as well excellent tool and finally the last tool that i'd like to talk about is docker desktop so docker desktop basically makes it very easy for you to work with docker containers within your actual desktop environment i use docker desktop a lot i am not a big fan of using docker when it comes to the terminal cli tool that they give so i usually resort to using docker desktop to basically manage all of the different images volumes containers and everything like that that i have on my system as you can see, I use Docker Desktop daily. I have a couple of different containers set up on my system. Some of them are PostgreSQL databases. Some of them are a Redis database. So I highly recommend Docker Desktop. It makes it very easy for you to use Docker on your system. Not only can you manage all of the containers that are running on your system, easily remove them, add them, but you can also manage all of the images that you have. For example, I recently was working on a project where I had to do some translations and there was this cool open source project called Libre Translate. So I quickly wanted to test it out if Libre Translate was a good fit for the project. So what I did was check if Libre Translate had a Docker image they had. So I quickly pulled it down, ran it, tested it, saw if it was a good fit, and then from there saw how I can integrate it within the actual project that I'm building. So I highly recommend Docker Desktop as well. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that the actual tools that I've shared with you in this video have inspired you to use them. And I can guarantee you that some of these are going to be applicable to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're a beginner developer or somebody who's more advanced within their software development career. So with that, as always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And with that, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.